Hello, in this lesson we're going to look at how you can control the character's head and eyes and record or direct their movement. This is an easy tutorial so let's just head over to MovieZoo and get started. MovieZoo is sitting here at its uh, default new blank set and the first thing we need to do is create a character. For this we're going to pick the robot. Anyone will do. Let's move them right there. Okay, um, directing the head and eyes is one of the few um, directing tasks where it doesn't have a prepare equivalent. So there's no prepare head and eyes because there's pretty much nothing to do. Instead when you want to move this character's head and eyes you just go straight into direct eyes and head like that. Okay this is a kind of cool feature of movie. So you've got two tabs up here. You can swap, bet swap between the eye controls and the head controls. Let's do the eyes first of all. You've got a slider which controls how open or closed they are. And we've got these little controls here, which I tell you, let's make this guy's eyes slightly different so that you can see the difference. Um, let's make the pupils black and the eyeballs white. Go back there. Now we can see what we're doing. Okay, so the eyes can now move around, and you can control how wide or how closed they are. Similarly, in the other tab, it's pretty much the same. You've got this head control, which you can control how the character looks around. Now, these are both really important controls when it comes to bringing life to your animations. And I'm going to spend a little bit of time showing you how to get the best out of them. So, eyes are the easiest. Let's do this one first. Okay, the eye control is simple. You hit record and you start uh, wiggling these little sort of eyeballs around the place. Now, you can either click on the eyeball and drag it left and right, up and down, or if you want you can simply click over in white space and the eye will pop to that position. Let's widen his eyes even more and we can do the same. Let's look at those events in the timeline, tools and timeline. So you can see all these little red events right here, we'll zoom in, represent the various things that you've done with the eyes. And just like anything else, you can move them around, you can right click and delete them, etc. On the other track, we've got the look at track. So this is the eye, this is the pupil sort of moving around. This is the eye size track down here. So let's scroll around and we can see the events right here where we've changed the size of the eyes. Okay, let's get rid of the timeline. Let's go up to direct. In fact, let's go back to the timeline and remove the eye movement, that one and that one. I don't want it to interfere with what we're about to do with the head. The head's still easy, but it's just a little bit different. So, direct eyes and head. Let's go to the head control. You've got exactly the same joystick. You've got this thing called look at speed. Now, by default, it sits around the middle in MovieZoo. And what that means is when you click on the extremities, the character will snap to that position according to the speed you've set here. So, if it's up very high, the snap will be almost instantaneous. And if you've set it down very low, then you can see that the character takes his time getting to those places. By default, we tend to keep it around the, the middle section. Now, the extra thing we need to say here is about this release button. Um, if you want the, the eyeball to, or the, the head control to snap back to the zero, 0 position right in the middle, you hit this release button. And that has ramifications for the rest of the character's movement and animation, and it's not present in the eye one. So it's always best that if you want the character to go back to zero, 0, that you hit this release and then you won't get unpredictable results as you come to animate or direct the character's body and movement across the set. So let's rewind and stick in some head movement. Again with the eyes you can either grab the dot and you can drag it around or you can click and the head will snap to these places. Finally, release. Now let's stop that and look at the timeline. Again, we've got the head look at track right here, and we can see all the little events that we've made. Let's delete them. Okay, some things to say about the head controls and the eye control, again, is their orientation is set up so that if you're looking at the control and looking at the character's face, left will be left and right will be right. If that character is turned round, then you've obviously got 
the opposite thing to do. So it's always best. My tip would be if ever you're doing eye and head movement, always have the character facing towards you. Either orientate your point of view or orientate the character so that that's the case. The second thing I'd say is a kind of animation tip. Usually, with human beings and everybody else, the eyes lead the head. So the eyes, let's just say that we want to do a look to the right here. Let's go back. First of all, the eyes go that way and the head follows just after. Let's look back and see how that goes. You'll notice that the eyes go and the head goes just afterwards. And that gives the most realistic uh, type of head movement. Also, I'm not really a fan of these clicking to go things. I quite like if you're going from left to right, put the character's head down a bit. You can suggest surprise or boredom or you can do all sorts of things with the head movement. And there's loads of videos uh, on the MovieZoo website which show great examples of eye and head animation. But for this tutorial, that's us finished.